What's up everybody, this is Aircrete Harry and in today's video I'm going to be talking about reinforcing materials. So I've gotten a lot of emails about what type of reinforcing materials uh, should people use for their different structures. So I've done a video like this in the past about uh, the basalt materials in particular but today I'll be covering a little more than just the basalt. And also, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe and click the bell notifications for any future updates I might have. So what I'm going to do is start here on this end. So this is a basalt mesh. So this is a reinforcing mesh that you can use in your structure to reinforce it. So I'm using this mesh here in particular for my structure. And... Um, you have different size meshes and they're for different reasons. So one reason is if you use this size mesh here with this opening, this is the size gap that you will have that's not reinforced. Now this is really, really small in comparison to what a lot of engineering plans call for in rebar spacing. So as an example, uh, my dome structures require a 12 inch uh, spacing for the rebar so horizontally they have to be 12 inches apart and vertically they have to be 12 inches apart some structures are six inches apart so what you would have in a six inch uh, spacing on the rebar is a six inch square that has no reinforcement now six inches is pretty tight but you can go even tighter by using meshes. So a favorite of mine is to combine rebar with mesh. And actually, my preference and construction is to use basalt fiber mesh, uh, basalt uh, fiber chop, as well as uh, sometimes stucco wiring and rebar. So if you look here up close, these are different mesh sizes of basalt mesh that you can order. Now basalt has been known to be stronger than fiberglass and so if you do the research you'll see uh, basalt is actually a lot stronger. I've seen cases of basalt mat like this. You can see here it's uh, basalt fabric. So there's different fabric types. And I've seen a fabric like this covered in resin. Uh, and I've also seen uh, something similar in fiberglass covered in resin. And you were able to put a screwdriver. The people making the video were able to put a screwdriver through the fiberglass. And the basalt mesh held. So it was much stronger. So it is a really strong product. When it comes to the basalt rebar. You'll see here this is a, these are a few examples of the rebar. And so when it comes to these rebar, there's a lot of uh, engineering uh, information out there on the strength and how well basalt rebar performs. And from everything I read, it performs as good, if not better, than steel rebar. Uh, and a major benefit to using basalt, especially along the coastal areas, is basalt doesn't rust. So by using basalt rebar or basalt meshes you'll have a reinforcing material in your concrete that doesn't rust and and that's key because normally when you're building with rebar you have to have enough concrete on both sides of the rebar to prevent water from penetrating the concrete reaching the rebar and rusting it because that will weaken your concrete with this you can build thinner shells. So I'm currently building a, a nine foot dome and it's going to be a thin shell dome and I'm using basalt products as my reinforcing materials. And so by uh, using this you also avoid a lot of chemicals. Uh, there's a lot of chemicals this is impervious to and so basalt is really a good product and in a lot of those ways. Now Basalt does have its uh, upsides and downsides. Now, again, as I mentioned, the engineering paperwork out there about 
all these uh, basalt materials and how strong they are. They um, also talk about uh, the difference between, and they also talk about the steel. So here's a piece of steel rebar. Now, this rebar you can bend. Basalt rebar you can't. Because basalt, if you don't know, it's made similar to fiberglass. So with fiberglass, they heat up uh, glass, sand, and they blow air at it. And they make these fine strands of fiber, glass fiber. And so they'll take that fiber, squish it together, put it in a resin. And that's how they make like fiberglass rebar. Or if they're making insulation, they'll just pack it loosely uh, into the walls for insulation. So that's fiberglass. So basalt is made the same way, but this is using uh, basalt rock. It's a lava rock, and the rock is heated up, and air is blown at it, and they're made into strands. And then they take these strands, put it in a mold, in a form, with resin, and that's how they make the basalt rebar. So this is just made up of thousands of strands of basalt uh, fibers. So if you need to make a bend in basalt like you can in rebar, you actually need to order your basalt rebar with whatever bends you want made. And they'll have a form for it so that they can make custom rebar to, to your specs. So this was um, a 90 degree, and this is what I used to come out of my foundation going up to tie onto. And... Um, Again, this is made from fibers and put in a form. So if you try to bend this, you can actually crack the, the resin. The fibers will be holding, but you'll hear the resin crack. I mean, it's not really easy unless you got a big piece that you can bend hard. But um, that's the downside to the basalt is if you have to make custom bends, you can't. So in that case, you want to use steel rebar. You know, so it all depends on the application and where you're applying it. So here now, we have basalt chop. And all these are of different sizes. So you can see they're all different size, they're all different length uh, basalt chop. And on the front here, I'll have a link in the description box below where you can order this. I didn't order it from this company, but uh, I guess you could look up the information there, as well as the link in my description box. And so you can see these are the different sizes and the names of these different meshes. So these are great because what I do is I take a handful of this and I add it to my mix, to each batch of cement that I'm mixing up. I'll have at least a handful of this. And I also like to use uh, PVA fibers um, that I'll throw into the, to my mix. And so I just try to maximize the strength everywhere I can using these different reinforcing materials. So you build it super strong the first time and it'll just last forever. So um, here is a basalt roving or basalt rope. And uh, this is also used as a reinforcing material for, for domes. Usually domes are built using these, uh, this rope as a reinforcing material. And so they'll just take a, a usually air form that's been sprayed with some cement already, with some concrete, then they'll run the basalt in some kind of pattern going all the way around the dome, and then they'll spray it and cover that with the concrete stucco mix, and then you have a reinforcing um, structure. So anyway, rope is something else that can be used. I prefer the meshes. I like these a lot. Um, 
So there's other, there's all types of basalt materials and pattern and different weave patterns that they have. Here are all the different mats. Because there are also uh, basalt gloves that are made and they're like super heat resistant. They have a high melting point and uh, these gloves that are made from basalt or have a super high heat resistance. Probably good as a welding glove. I've been doing welding lately and I'm always burning my hand. <laughs> so anyway, now um, what I'm going to move on to are this is the mesh, the basalt mesh roll. So these come on a 150 foot roll usually. And uh, this one here is about 36 inches wide for this uh, basalt mesh. So this is one material I use. Now, I mentioned some of the downfalls, some of the things I don't like about the basalt. Now, I do like it's lightweight and it's strong once the concrete's on there. But I have seen cases where this was used in a uh, like a planter box. Uh, so it was a thin walled. Uh, reinforced with this basalt mesh and a crack formed and it pulled apart now the basalt was still holding it together but uh, the strands here pulled apart and that's one thing that drive me nuts about it now if you look closely this is all stitched together you can see here it's it's all stitched so they they run these uh, lengths of basalt rope and then they'll stitch it together here and if you feel it's also hard because it's run through a resin as well so the fibers go through a resin and they stitch it and so anyway these stitchings are what drive me nuts because you can easily break them apart if you pull them and so that's something i don't like to see and that's also why some of my domes i'm using stucco wire mesh so this looks like chicken wire, but it's actually called stucco wire. And um, this stuff is, you know, made of metal. It's galvanized. And I cannot, I cannot pull that apart. And that hurts to try. <laughs> and so in my eyes, this is much stronger. But now you're using metal in your structure. And something I haven't discussed is um, uh, the energies of a house. So certain structures, uh, depending on certain, what materials you build the structure with, will be very energetic. And you'll feel a positive energy on your body. And in order to have that, you have to ha have a structure built that has no metal in it. So some of my domes, I'm using this. And those are the domes I'm not really uh, spending a lot of time in. The domes like the living room and bedroom dome, uh, those will be made using the basalt mesh because those structures will have no metal in the structure at all. And between that, the shape of my dome, because uh, my domes are hemispherical but on a stem wall. So it makes them more of a silo shape than a dome. And just having the taller stem walls changes the uh, energies of the dome so anyway there's um there's a youtube channel by dan winter out there and he discusses all these energies he's got a lot of scientific uh information he was one of the original creators of the gaia tv network and um he's got a ton of information on these energies and so he talks about it on his channel so i would say if you're interested in learning more about the energies and piezoelectric and all those types of things check out the channel for that but uh, that's part of why I'm using this and why I'm using the basalt mesh so again uh, some structures I'm building I'm using only the basalt mesh and you can you can go more than one layer with this stuff you know you can uh, have one layer you can spray it you can apply another layer of this spray that the only problem with that is the cost you know because each you know each row is about 325 dollars and that's something else i didn't discuss is uh this is about 80 bucks and this is 325 bucks 
So obviously price is another big factor as to what you're going to build with. And, um, but just know that any of these materials, you can use multiple layers of them and massively increase the strength of your structure. And we're talking about something that's still really thin. A, a thin if you're building a dome, the way I'm building them, your structural portion can be extremely strong. So here's another uh, material that I have. And this material is uh, actually just mosquito netting. Mosquito netting is made from a fiberglass. And this material is very strong. And you can see the whole pattern. It's, it's a very tight hole pattern. Obviously, they're stopping mosquitoes from getting in. And so I like to use this as my very first layer of reinforcement on my domes. So when I have my air forms inflated and um, I then cover them with a hat made of this material and this material gets sprayed first before applying the mesh, whether it's basalt or stucco wire. Um, and so as I described before about the size of the holes, so if you're using this mesh, this is you know about a two inch hole here, two inch square. And by using that basalt mesh, uh, this fiberglass mesh first, I have complete coverage. And so that also helps to avoid cracking. It'll be very hard for a crack to form, for example, right down this strip of basalt material here. But in this area, a crack could form. Now, if you use both of these, there's no cracks forming at all because you have complete coverage and reinforcement on your structure. So I like to know, what are you guys using for your reinforcement? Are you using basalt materials? Are you using steel? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I love to hear what you guys are using. I love to hear what you think of what I just uh, showed you guys here. It's um, for me, it's been a, a learning process. You know, I didn't come about this overnight. It's been years of research and experimenting and I have all the structures to prove it. Uh, I have actual hands-on knowledge when it comes to a lot of these materials now. And so I really love to hear your opinion and what you guys think. So let me know in the comments below. Also, if um, you're interested in these materials in the description box below will be a link as well as to my website, aircreteharry.com, where you can find all your aircrete tools. And also another great thing is we have our online workshop where i discuss these these materials as well and you actually learn how i use them in the building of my domes so that's it from now peace out this is air creed harry i love you all and i'll catch you later